me, I'm super fly, super duper fly, super duper fly. Me, I'm super fly, super duper fly. In this video, I want to say something about the proof of theorem four, this big result that gave us what we needed in order to prove the classification of modules over a PID existence theorem in invariant factor form. So first, let's just recall what this says. So theorem four says, let R be a PID, M a free R module of finite rank, little n, and n a submodule of M. Then the submodule n is free of rank M, where M is less than or equal to n. And there exists a basis y1 up through yn of M such that a1y1 up to amym is a basis for n, where these ai's are non-zero elements of the ring, satisfying the divisibility conditions a1 divides a2, a2 divides a3, up to am minus 1 divides am. So I just want to get the proof started in this video, and we'll finish it in the first video of the next lecture. If n is the trivial zero submodule, there's nothing to prove. So let's suppose that n is not zero. There are several clever ideas at the beginning of this proof. There are several key things to remember. First, for each R module homomorphism, phi from M to R, you take the restriction of phi to the submodule N, and you get the image phi of N is a submodule of R. Okay, so for each R module homomorphism from M to R, you get this image is a submodule of R. What is a submodule of R? Well, R you think of as a left module over itself. Submodules are ideals. And if R is a PID, then a submodule of R is a principal ideal of R. So what does that mean? For each R module homomorphism from M to R, we get the image of the restriction to N, phi of N, is a principal ideal of R. So let's pick a generator for it. It's the ideal generated by A phi for some A phi in R. The next big idea is to consider the collection of all of these principal ideals. So let's let sigma be the set of all of these ideals generated by A phi, where phi is some R module homomorphism from M to R. So it's a collection of all the principal ideals that arise in this way. Phi is non-empty, or sorry, sigma is non-empty because for one thing, we could always take the trivial homomorphism, which sends everything to zero. So the image of N is zero in R, and that's a principal ideal. It's generated by the element zero. So the trivial uh, submodule, the ideal generated by zero is certainly in sigma. So it's not zero. Well, sigma is a collection of principal ideals in this ring R that is a PID. But you can phrase this in terms of modules as well. R is a module over itself. And it's very clear because R is a PID that all of the submodules are finitely generated. They're all principal. They're all generated by one element. So the ring R as an R module over itself uh, satisfies one of those three equivalent conditions from theorem one that we proved at the very beginning of this lecture. Which one? Uh, certainly every submodule of R is finitely generated because R is a PID. So that means because this condition three is satisfied, condition two is also satisfied. And what does that say? If you have any collection of submodules, it contains a maximal element under inclusion. So by theorem one, from the beginning of this lecture, sigma has a maximal element under inclusion. This is the whole reason why we proved theorem one at this point in section 12.1, because we need to apply uh, this particular part of it for the proof of theorem four. All right, so what does that mean that sigma has a maximal element? It's this collection of principal ideals that means that there exists some homomorphism from M to R, let's call it nu, from M to R, such that the image of the restriction to N, nu, nu of N, 
is some principal ideal of R, some A new ideal generated by A new that is not properly contained in any other one of the principal ideals that arises in this way. So we have this one principal ideal that's not properly contained in any other ideal in this collection sigma. So I'm going to pause and erase and just say a little bit about the highlights of how we use this particular homomorphism new to prove theorem four. Where are we? We know that this collection of principal ideals that comes from looking at the image of our submodule N under homomorphisms from M to R has a maximal element. So that means we have this one special homomorphism new from M to R such that the image of N under new is the ideal generated by this A new. And this is not properly contained in any of these other principal ideals that are in sigma, any of the other principal ideals that arise in this way. Okay, so what does that mean? That means you apply new to uh, M, but really to the restriction, you apply new just to N and you get the ideal generated by A new. So in particular, there's something in N that maps to this particular ring element A new. So we'll name that element. We'll let Y be an element of N mapping to A new, this generator that we've chosen for this principal ideal under this homomorphism new. So what are we saying? New of Y equals A new. And the idea is that we're going to use this special homomorphism new and this special element Y to prove that N is free of rank M, where M is less than or equal to N. We're going to build one special element uh, out of this Y, and then we're going to write uh, N as a direct sum of a free module of rank one and then something else, and we'll argue by induction. The second big idea is that, okay, we have to prove that N is a free R module of rank M, but we also have to prove that there are these good choices of bases, a nice basis for M and a nice basis for N satisfying, given by these elements that satisfy these divisibility relations. So we're gonna prove that existence of a good basis part, this statement number two, from statement number one by induction on the rank of M. So there's still a lot more to do in the proof of theorem four. I find this to be one of the most complicated arguments of the whole course. Uh, so we'll stop here because now at least we've explained why we started this lecture by proving this theorem one. And we'll pick up in the next lecture from here and we'll show how to prove theorem four and the rest of the main theorem, the classification of modules over a PID.